Dr Buckley. My Lord, the new statutory duty on local authorities to provide safe accommodation-based services for victims of domestic abuse and their children is widely welcomed, but I am still sympathetic to the ongoing fears that this might mean local authorities simply redistribute funding away from community services in order to meet that statutory need. So I do welcome these thoughtful amendments and the discussion that focuses on protecting specialist community service provision. And while I'm not, still not sure whether it should be legislative, it's very important this has come up, and I am of a mind to consider seriously amendments 30 and 31 in particular. However, there's one category of specialist service which I'm worried the bill has inadvertently not focused on, and that's women's domestic abuse services, whether community or uh, accommodation-based, which at present are really under threat, and ironically, council funding doesn't help. The bill's increase in funding or the new legal duty on councils won't resolve this issue, as there does seem to be some muddled thinking about how councils should deliver specialist services more broadly. And I'd appreciate that in this particular set of amendments or in guidance notes, the uh, noble minister might take that into account. Just to declare a minor interest, I'm a long-standing columnist for the MJ, to the uninitiated, the Municipal Journal. And it's been eye-opening over the last decades watching councils uh, in, in recent years trying to negotiate uh, equalities legislation in the context of new political trends such as gender-neutral policies. The Equalities Act of 2010 clearly protects single-sex exemptions that would allow women to have legitimate access to women-only services and spaces, uh, gyms, hospitals, changing rooms, and of course, crucial services such as rape crisis, women's refuges, and women's uh, advice services. But as the newly launched organisation Sex Matters notes, rules and explanations are now confused and controversies around gender identity means that organisations can be reluctant to communicate their women-only services clearly. And when they do, councils can use this uh, um, uh, against them. So, I, as I say, I think that this just needs to be clarified uh, as we go forward, because all the good work will be undermined otherwise. One example of the unintended consequence of a fudge around championing of women's refugees is how councils are interpreting equalities impact assessments. In the drive for more inclusive non-gendered service provision that caters for the needs of all protected characteristics, women's refugees are in danger of losing funding for not being inclusive enough. One recent example that I mentioned in relation to another bill is that of the Brighton Race-based uh, RISE organisation that has lost a contract worth £5 million over seven years. Um, after 26 years of uh, stalwart uh, work, its existence is now threatened. RISE is predominantly, but not exclusively, a Women for Women service. But the briefing from the BIDS evaluation team from Brighton and Hove Council explained that RISE needed to cater more for heterosexual and gay men and specifically remove barring to services experienced, um, uh, services experienced by the trans community. And the message was very clearly then that they would stop mainly that the rise should stop mainly focusing on women victims of domestic abuse. Just to note that rise has an LGBTQ uh, domestic abuse casework service, and it co-piloted an LGBTQ refuge. But surely, its women's only services shouldn't need to be anything other than exemplary for women, whether uh, uh, um, accommodation-based or community-based. But the Council was clear that the contract wouldn't be continued because RISE is primarily a service for women. As Women's Aid Nikki Cross pointed out, we are at serious risk of losing our network of refuges run by Women for Women. And we shouldn't be naive or disingenuous here because one reason why there's a coy reluctance to demarcate services for women only is because of the controversies over definitions of a woman as defined by biological sex. So gender neutrality can become a shield to avoid any accusations of transphobia, and councils can hide behind that. Even this bill, in its attempts at being gender neutral, seems reluctant to defend or bolster the women's refuge movement or women's, for and, uh, uh, women's services in the community, without which, to be honest, the whole issue of domestic abuse wouldn't even be a political agenda at all. So perhaps the Minister can just assure us 
that the bill won't lead to a new type of procurement of less specialised service provision or the downgrading of essential services for women, whether accommodation-based or community-based, and that communities won't lose the unparalleled expertise garnered over decades of women's refuges and women's services in its enthusiasm to hand over uh, funding and procurement to councils. Just don't forget uh, some of the risks involved with that.